another rainy day after work um, and tonight I haven't really got anything done I've just been sitting looking at things and lying underneath the car and trying to figure out how I'm going to run the fuel and the electrical lines um, my Radiator grill has been painted, but it's not a very nice day for painting the the surround uh, with the new stone guard there. But I have sanded that all back. That's ready to paint. It's just not a good day for painting. Uh, the the radiator thing looks okay. We'll see how it comes out. But. I've been looking at my plan to run the cables down the chassis rails and I don't think that's going to work. So um, originally I was talking about having the side covers and there's bolts that hold them and use those bolts on the inside to hold the P-clips to hold the cabling and the wires or the piping and the wires. Um, I've since found out from a friend of mine who's got an original that Somebody mentioned this in the comments actually, and they were dead right. The, the cars with the things that come up the side, that is the under tray. So the under tray is flat and then it wraps around and comes up. Um, I don't actually want to do that style because that's a real pain in the neck apparently. What I'm going to do is have aluminium floors that sit in from the inside uh, in sections. So I've got the front section there, there'll be a section kind of at the front here and another one in the middle and then one for the tail. Um, one of the reasons for doing it in sections is it makes it easier to handle. Uh, you can remove the sections individually and I don't want to cover the underside of this cross member. This is all open. It's kind of a section and it's got holes in it for the brake cables and brake mechanism and things like that to go through. So I don't want to close the bottom of that off because it'll just get full up with water and muck and corrode out. So you want to keep the bottom of that open. Um, the reason I can't really do the cabling and the piping where I thought is just because there's too much stuff in the way. I would have to get over or through this bit of cross member. I've got the seat belt mounts right there. You've got the front spring hangers there. Um, you then have to get through the front cross member, through the floor. It just gets really complicated. So I've been considering a different plan, which is kind of thinking outside the box a bit, or rather thinking outside the chassis rails, and that's run everything up the middle. Um, there's plenty of room there, and once I've got the floors in, I can just bolt the P-clips straight to the floor. And what I can do is um, put a couple of holes through this chassis member. They're not in the way of the seat belts at all. It goes through the middle of that. Um, and I can put grommets through those holes. But I can run the cable right up the middle through this piece of wood up there. Uh, and then it gets a little bit tricky knowing where I want to actually take them. I think I want to avoid going through the middle of the cross member because that's where the all the brake mechanism is. Um, although, if this is all clamped down, if you've got sort of rubberized, this is quite thick cable, rubberized P clips either side, that would hold that down and out of the way uh, because it would come round something like that and then you could clip it to this using the same bolts that are going to hold the floor on. Um, I don't think I could go right through the middle because then it gets a bit tricky about where do you run things underneath the gearbox. So I'm kind of looking at that at the moment, um, but I think that's the best way to get from the rear of the car up to the front. So I've got the main battery cable which has to loop around the cutoff switch there so it would come sort of up there and along to this I can just turn one of these lugs around of course um, that's easy enough and then 
I think it makes sense to run it up the middle there. It's out of the way. Nobody's going to stand on it because you can't because it's under the torque tube. Um, and it's just what happens at the front that gets a little bit more interesting. And I'm hoping this rain dampens down all the pollen for my hay fever. I've also been looking at this petrol tap. The, um, <coughs> excuse me, the aluminium, it just shows the tightest radius bend I can get from the copper pipe. So I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to put this. Uh, the SU pump should easily be able to lift the fuel from the top. So I'm going to have the two um, outlets in the top there. And what I'm thinking is I will mount this in here somewhere so it's more or less out of the way. Um, I can easily make a plate that screws on there that this bolts to. And I can loop those two copper tubes, copper and nickel tubes, along here. There's the timber frame that I can attach them to. They have to be clipped at least every 12 inches. And then those will go straight into the tank with little joiners somehow. And I'm thinking for the connection between the tap there and the hard line at the bottom, I'm going to use a piece of rubber fuel hose because I think I need some, some um, flexibility in this line. Uh, because the just the relative movement between the frame and the chassis I don't know how much twist there will be in it and you know it'd be good to have a little bit of something flexible but also it then makes it fairly easy for me to run the flexible line down to um, to sort of down in here somewhere and that hard line is clipped all the way along there and then runs up the middle along with the electrical wires. Um, there's no fuel return. This is an old car, there's nothing like that. So there's just a single fuel line running up. And the battery cable, and then uh, wires to, there's no reversing light on this, they didn't have those. Uh, there's the stop lights, the tail lights, the number plate light, which is basically run off the tail light. And possibly indicators if I do add tiny indicators to it. Um, that's the thinking at the moment, but it's just tricky to figure out exactly where to run those pipes so that they're not going to be rubbing on anything, they're not going over any sharp edges, um, because that's the sort of thing that they will fail me for when I go to get it certified. Uh, everything has to be safe. So, yeah, like I say, some days I really don't get a lot done because I'm just sort of out here thinking about things, trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to do it. I'm out on the car again, not actually doing much. Again, just sort of looking at it and thinking and trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. Um, still looking at the fuel lines and the cabling, I have this is my, my radiator shell and I have etch primed now the stone guard. Um, I can't remember how long that primer takes to dry but once that's done I will give that a coat of black and probably call that done. Yeah, I'm not convinced by the silver uh, I think once I, if I give it a bit of a rub down, it'll, it'll dull down a little bit, which is what it needs. Um, pretty sure I have a plan now for this, for all the piping and the cabling. So my idea is to run it straight up the middle um, because I can clamp it to the floor and um, bend it over or drill holes to go through the cross member here a um, couple of holes with grommets there uh, it's easy enough to make holes in the wood here there's plenty of clearance underneath the brake mechanism which is this for the brake string um, 
and then I'm going to come through the middle here and bend um, this on this side of the car is the electrical cabling so it's going to come through here there's going to be holes in this anyway for to bolt the under tray the floor in um, so this will have p-clips to hold that in place and then this is going to run through there um, because I can easily put grommets through there and then it's sort of underneath there and then I've got oops if it'll focus I've already got bolts screws to hold all of this together um, and remember this stays on the chassis so I can put p-clips under these screws and uh, this is this is tubing but you get the idea that main power cable will come up here uh, so that should all be nice and neat ah, focus silly thing um, tucked in up there that joins onto that stud and then um, there'll be a similar cable going down for the wiring to the back of the car and the rest of the wiring uh, because it has to come off this is like the main feed effectively so I'm going to have wiring that runs back through here because I'm going to put all the electrical stuff underneath here um, it'll be up in here somewhere what I may actually do is make a panel that bolts onto this um, hopefully with enough length and, and flexibility in the cabling that I can unbolt it from that and drop it down. So if I want to work on it, um, it's not up here. I can, I can get to it a bit more easily because otherwise, once the body's in place, it's gonna be tricky to get to all of that sort of stuff. Um, so I'll have to think of something there. Luckily, there isn't a lot of electrical stuff needed on this car, but I will be using some relays, modern relays for some of the things like the horn, um, the fuel pump uh, that's probably it I think um, because it's a magneto driven car there's not a lot of wiring so there'll be a hole here for cabling just one and then uh, the cables to the lights and things will sort of run along probably uh, it's, it's hard to know if I can run them inside the chassis rails because you've got the spring shackles there. There's things everywhere that are in the way. And being a Brooklyn's, the clearances on everything are ridiculously tight. Um, so I'm just trying to make sure I don't sort of design myself into a corner. But I think that'll work for the electrical cable. And similarly on the other side, there will be the fuel line and it will also come across the floor because on the other side it's a little bit tricky because it's underneath this which is good because it's all hidden and protected um, so the fuel line will go along here and then sort of terminate and then I'm going to use a piece of rubber fuel line which is this. Uh, now, are we going to be able to see this? I think my gimbal might be a bit tall. Let's see if I can get underneath here. Um, will it work? Just. So, this is the cross member that goes across. Uh, I'm going to drill a hole here for a grommet and that fuel line will come out of that hole which means it avoids the brake strings and the uh, drag link uh, because this of course is going into that space as well when you go to full left lock um, this goes in there and that little piece of rubber hose will come up here, it'll be clamped again 
via screw holes I've already got and it'll join onto a piece of hard line that'll come off this um, and that'll come up uh, I'll have to figure out exactly how that's going to work but it'll either I don't think there's room to go down behind this one uh, there might be actually I might be able to poke it down through there but at some point it's going to join up so that I can join the inlet of the fuel pump to the end of that hose. And I think with careful bending um, that, get this back to the right angle, that piece of tube, I should be able to feed it through, hopefully. Um, the idea is that at some point I'm going to have to take the whole car apart because I need to paint the chassis and then the floors go in the under tray and then the fuel lines will go in on top of that and then i'll put the engine and gearbox and everything else back in but i'm trying to make sure that i've got access to everything i don't want to make it so that i've got a you know a hose clamp on a fuel line that i can't get to if the gearbox is in the car so i'm thinking very carefully about where everything's going to be placed how i will get to it if i need to um actually adjust things or modify things. So that piece of fuel, well this gimbal's all upset, um, that straight piece will terminate down here somewhere and then I'm just going to use flexible line behind here to come up to that fuel tap I think. Um, I could either use flexible or um, I might make that from hardline as well and put a joiner in it. I think I've got some of those. Uh, I think that'll work. And I think I'm supposed to take into account things like if one of these joints leaks, you have to make sure fuel isn't going to pull anywhere. Um, so I may take that hardline all the way out there so it's not sitting in that cross member if that makes sense so the join would actually be out in here somewhere because that section of the floor i can put small drainage holes in which it'll need anyway um, because if this fills up with water you want the water to drain out so i think that's probably going to be the best way to do it um, and then also the fuel line isn't interfering with the back of the seats or anything like that so it's tricky i'm 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 getting to the point where I'm not going to be able to fit those until I've done the under trays and I can't do the under tray until I've got the metal which is hopefully not far away um, but I can't do the under trays until I've actually done the chassis so this is why I'm trying to think of ways that I can attach everything to those under trays not the chassis um, they're all bolted together but because I can't mock it up yet I wouldn't know where to drill the holes in the chassis if that makes sense so that's my thinking at the moment um, like I say it's a little bit complicated and I'm, I'm getting very close to the stage where I need to start disassembling it and actually paint the chassis I guess um that'll be the next thing i think probably i need to do all of that before i do the body um yeah it'll be paint the chassis uh i need to get the radiator finished first yeah it's getting tricky it's just it's getting to a point where the the um order of operations as you'd call it in machining is starting to get quite important now uh, I'd quite like to also get the fuel tank built if I can, so I know that's just ready to go in. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's getting quite close. So I'm not looking forward to having to remove all the running gear. Uh, that's going to be a pain in the neck, but hopefully that's not going to be too bad. 
Um, I also need to think about things that I will need to drill holes in the chassis for. So I know whoops, that there are, there'll need to be some holes in here because there is a, a flat plate that goes on there with a vertical piece that comes up. Um, that matches to another piece sort of flat piece that comes along here so that makes the the bottom of the the bonnet i need to decide how high up i want that to come um, i'm guessing ideally as low as possible so probably in there and that may just bolt straight to the outside of the chassis as well uh, i have just noticed down here that this is going to get interesting how that panel fits in there. So, lots of fiddly little details. But uh, the other thing I might do is reassemble the headlamps. It's been so long now, I hope I can actually remember how they go back together. Um, eventually, I might paint the back of them, but. I don't know. I, I I don't mind them how they are at the moment. They're you know, the sort of the sort of look of them isn't too bad. Um and having things like that which aren't brand new looking makes it obvious you weren't trying to build a brand new looking car. Uh what else do I need to do? Uh there are some other little details I need to figure out if I want to do. Um some of the cars actually have a flat um like have this covered in so there's actually a a sort of cowling that goes over the middle there whether or not i want to do that um, that can always be done later yeah it's i get into these states where i spend a lot of time procrastinating on things and at some point i'm just going to have to do something so must be getting pretty close to that point now. It's the weekend and I haven't been working on the car because I am waiting for a few things to turn up. Uh, the first thing is all of my sheet metal so I can do the under tray and the body and the fuel tank. Um, hopefully that'll be delivered soon. And I've also ordered a a new inlet manifold um, from Blue Diamond. They have nice cast ones with the right flange pattern for this style of carburetor. Uh, the original cars would have had OM style carbs. Uh, these are UBAs. They're exactly the same except the mounting flange is vertical. But luckily they do um, both styles of inlet manifold. And I'm guessing that's because a lot of people fit later probably hv2 i imagine carbs um, later su's which have the vertical flange as well so functionally these are the same as the om ones that uses the same rebuild cap even uh, my painted radiator shell is over there i'm going to give that a little bit of a rub down and i may also actually clear coat it um, i'm just waiting for the clear coat to arrive that's the new stone guard, which has been etch primed and painted. It needs another coat of black paint. And the third thing I'm waiting for, I'm going to keep as a surprise um, because it's one of those incredibly difficult to find things. Um, it's on its way from Australia of all places. And I'm going to leave that one until it arrives, hopefully this week. Uh, other than that, like I say, nothing on the car. I've been having a big clean up because I've actually been working on the Valisset. I'm gonna do another film about that in a minute. Um, as part of my clean up, I cleaned up this bench because it was covered in crap and I found a container full of tar, basically. It's the best way I could describe it. Um, and it was a little tin that I had put some uh, SU, uh, sort of 
throttle adjustment screws, they're little, little nerdle screws, um, into, I believe, evaporust, and I'd forgotten about them. And the evaporust basically, I guess the water evaporated off, and it was left with, it's kind of like treacle or marmite or something like that, horrible black stuff. So I managed to, I tried dissolving it in acetone, that didn't work, or carb cleaner. Uh, turns out just normal household cleaner cleans it up in boiling water. So I've cleaned those up and I'm going to put those screws through the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, but I've discovered this needs a clean as well because I don't know what I had in there last time I used it. But uh, there are growths in there now. They were floating on the top of the what should have just been plain water. Um, so I need to give that a good clean as well. The, like I say, I haven't really done anything on the car um, as far as I can tell on the original cars, I've been looking at the, the, the routing of the pipes. They do go up the chassis rails, but it's just, it's just not an easy way to do it. So I think I am going to go with my plan of running them right up the middle under the torque tube, up to this front cross member, and then sort of across where they need to go. I think that'll be the way to do it. Uh, the other thing worth mentioning that I keep forgetting to mention is... The other day when I had the car all together um, with the battery sitting in it and uh, electrical cable and other bits and pieces just sitting in it, I weighed it again um, using my little crane weighing scale. I just lift up each wheel and turn, um, just a soft rope around the, around the top of the wheel and you can just lift it off the ground. And total weight as it is um, was 675 kg. So. The whole car should come in under 800, I'm hoping. Um, I think that was the listed weight of them, was, was 800 kg. So the skin, uh, I've ordered three sheets, I think, of steel. You don't end up using all three sheets, but um, you need three sheets to get big enough pieces. So each sheet of steel is 23 kg, I believe. So. Even if I used all three sheets, that's not going to take it up over 800 kg. So, yeah, I thought that was interesting. So those screws are in the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, hopefully that cleans them up. It's kind of ironic how often you have to clean the metal basket that goes inside the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, it gets filthy, strangely enough. So I gave that a good scrub. Uh, the other thing... I'm looking at doing is I got this 5kg tub of molasses um, from the local farmland shop and I've mixed that with water in my um, 200 litre plastic drum I've got out near Humpty, our water tank and the reason for that is for rust removal and I want to restore this push mower which is, as you can see, is pretty rusty. Uh, this is the perfect sort of thing to go into the molasses. I think even the tyres should be safe to go in, although I'm going to see if I can remove those. I won't put the wood through, though. Um, so I'm going to pull that apart. There's no value in these things. These are You can get these pretty easily. Um, I got this from the tip for it's either $2 or $5. Um, but... I don't know, it's just another little thing to restore and paint up nicely. Uh, it actually works reasonably well. The blades are fairly sharp on this one. So that's just another little project. Uh, somebody was asking about the molasses and what sort of ratio you use. I don't think it really matters that much. Um, this 5kg tub, you know, mixed up into the 200 litre drum pretty well. So it's just a matter of chucking it in there and seeing seeing how it does I guess. Stripping down this lawnmower I thought I'd better actually take some pictures of it or some film of it so I remember how it all goes back together. Um, I don't think it's that complicated. It's had various random screws and things replaced over the years by the looks of it. Some of them don't match. Yeah. Uh, things like this carriage bolt screws. Uh, I think this was probably the original finish on it, this kind of yellow. I don't know if it's paint or like powder coat, but that was under the grips and that's the only bit that survived. 
and also sort of under the handles uh, there was a little fleck of plastic that came off somewhere yeah. between the two different bits of the handle so I just wanted to have a look and see how it comes apart I'm guessing there are bolts under there are there screws does this come out I'm not sure uh, these two halves must separate because that's the only way to get that off because that's a single piece and it's sitting on little pegs uh, there's holes there I suspect there's supposed to be cotter pins or split pins through there it's missing one of the grease caps it's got little little oilers with little caps which is pretty cool um, I think the wooden roll is probably fine that won't go in the molasses of course um yeah it can't be too hard to take apart surely let's see i'll just keep undoing bolts until there aren't any more bolts to undo and that's pretty cool one of my three things just arrived so steel and aluminium to keep going with the body that'll probably be my christmas holiday job Pretty much have this hand mower apart. Um, interestingly, the wheels and the main body were gold by the looks of it. That's the original paint. And it's got an interesting little sort of ratchet sprocket mechanism. And also, uh, it looks like there's a bearing. So the only piece I haven't been able to get out so far is this shaft. So I don't know if these the heads of these have been sheared off or if they deliberately um, take the heads off so you can't get to those one of them I was able to get with vice grips um, and undo the, the bolt and that let me get that out uh, this one there isn't quite enough there to grip on so what I may end up doing is welding a 6mm nut onto that um, put the nut over the top weld down through the middle and then you can you can get that undone but it looks like there are actually meant to be bearings in there. So there's one of them. But on this side, uh, there isn't much of it left. So that's all there is. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be possible to get replacements for these. So that's a little bearing cage. The interesting thing is uh, it's the side where the oiler doesn't have a lid that actually has the good bearing or reasonably good bearing uh, the one with the cover doesn't so the cage is totally gone there's there's nothing left of it there's little tiny bits of it left um, so I guess what I can see is can maybe this uh, this outer probably comes out and i may be able to get a sort of more modern sealed bearing that will that will work in there um, i'm assuming this is kind of pressed onto the shaft not really sure in which case maybe i'm, I'm i am able to remove that i think all of this will just go into the molasses as it is um, this is pretty good the blade piece this seems to be the this is the piece that the this kind of shears against so that all needs a clean up there's, there's rust in there and that's what the molasses should do it should just take care of all of the rust um, I don't think I need to put the wheels in there um, should be able to clean those up and repaint those it looks like they just need a spray of gold paint the tires are good but yeah it's just these bearings have to see if i can figure out how those can be repaired i'm sure other people have restored these things there must be information online about what you can do or else i can just measure it up and see if i can get something suitable or machine up something suitable or even if i had to replace it with a 
bronze bush, brass bush. Um, it's not like this is really going to get a lot of use. So as long as it sort of works. But um, yeah, um, I'm pleased my all of my metal arrived. So now that means I can go ahead with fitting the floors and starting to look at skinning the body at some point. Oops. Um, I was able to knock these bearing things out pretty easily just with a socket and a plastic hammer. Um, this is the, the completely gone one. The cage has completely rusted away. Unless that's it. No, that's just hard packed grease. Um, this one is the, the good one, or rather less knackered one. And I've not really seen bearings like this before. It's sort of a metal outer that presses in. Um, sort of runs on that. Yeah, I'll have to see if I can get those off, but I'm going to leave those soaking overnight, I think, in the, um, in the penetrant stuff. Uh, looks like that might be a bit tricky to get off. I uh, wonder if that's supposed to move because there is kind of a spring washer thing in there. Uh, I don't think that's going to move anywhere. But uh, I guess that goes kind of like that. Yeah, I wonder if anything like this is even available these days. I don't know how old this lawnmower would be. It's not ancient. Um, probably 50s or 60s, I think. Something like that. So maybe you can get these. don't know. But uh, I think that's probably it for the night. Um, and sometime during the week I will sort out hanging all these bits and pieces up on bits of wire and then I can go into the molasses tank. We'll see how well that works. Had to go a little bit further um, just to get the bearings out and get that end piece out. Um, in the end, I had to drill one of them. I just carefully drilled through the center until I could knock out the remains of the thread. Uh, turns out all the threads on this seem to be metric. Um, so that's an M8 thread. Uh, the rest of the bolts all seem to be M6s. And this, I'm pretty sure these races should come off, um, but they are really stuck on there. So there's two ways I could go about doing this. I've got the bottom one in the vise, and theoretically you should be able to sort of wiggle this around until the shaft comes free in the middle. And the other way I can look at doing it is there are holes in this, and I think you can probably get a drift behind there and sort of punch that up. Um, if I can't get those bearings and I need to make something then I would need to make new sort of collars for this I think but um, I've got it soaking I think that's where I'm gonna leave it for tonight I really should go in but um, yeah interesting little diversion of course I was doing this while I was waiting for all the metal but now the metals here so back onto the car next time I think